lecture is going to be about genetic diseases. As you know, genetic diseases are uh, inherently uh, acquired from our genetic code, which we inherit from our um, parents. Uh, so it's very possible for a disease to run uh, through families because of the genetic code, and this is where our genetic disease arises from. So when we look at uh, genetic disease, it's important to uh, understand that it's uh, synonymous with hereditary diseases. So uh, by definition, they are derived from one's parents and are trans transmitted in the gametes through the generations and therefore are familial. Of uh, importance is to note that congenital is not synonymous with genetic. So a congenital disease is not a genetic disease and a genetic disease is not a congenital disease. However, there's a lot of interlap, um, intersection between the two, uh, uh, which I'll explain shortly. So, for example, we have uh, some congenital diseases that are not genetic. For example, congenital syphilis, um, uh, HIV, hepatitis B, toxoplasmosis, uh, any of the tortures infections in, in general. So these diseases are uh, acquired uh, by vertical transmission from mother to child and are not derived from any abnormality in the genetic code. On the other hand, not all genetic diseases are congenital. Uh, the expression of Huntington's disease, for example, uh, begins very late in uh, one's life, usually after the third or fourth decade of life. As you know, Huntington's disease is a, a neurodegenerative condition genetic condition so genetic disease in terms of uh, uh, genetic disease usually arises from a mutation uh, and as we know a mutation refers to the permanent changes in the DNA uh, usually mutations may occur only in 1% uh, of the human population and a mutation usually has a deleterious effect on the person inheriting the mutation this is uh, in comparison to uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms, which are more prevalent in uh, the population, usually more than 1%, and uh, you usually do not have any deleterious effects uh, arising uh, because of this uh, SNP, as they are abbreviated. So for those that uh, affect the germ cells, these usually tend to be transmitted to the offspring and may give rise to inherited diseases. Uh, when you have mutations in somatic cells, however, uh, they are not transmitted to the progeny, but are very important in causing cancers and some congenital malformations. In the earlier um, lectures, we talked about uh, genes which are responsible for carcinogenesis, and some of those genes we, we mentioned were proto-oncogenes, and we also talked about tumor suppressor genes. We briefly highlighted also genes of DNA repair and genes of uh, apoptosis. So usually uh, somatic cell mutations will give um, rise to these uh, abnormalities in these genes, which eventually results in um, neoplastic transformation and carcinogenesis. So uh, the mutations in protein coding genes can be uh, divided into different types. So uh, we have point mutations. Uh, point mutations usually result from the substitution of a single gene, a single nucleotide base by a different base, resulting in the replacement of one amino acid by another in the protein product. The mutation in the beta globin chain of hemoglobin giving rise to sickle cell anemia is an excellent example of a point mutation that alters the meaning of the genetic code. Such mutations are sometimes referred to as missense mutations. So in order to, for you to um, understand point mutations, you have to have a basic understanding of the genetic code and how uh, the genetic code actually uh, codes for various proteins. Um, so essentially, you have uh, the different um, base pairs uh, coming in triplet, uh, triplets, and these triplets code for a specific uh, amino acid in a amino acid sequence and the amino acid um, eventually um,
form amino acid chains which can eventually give rise to um, the protein uh, with the addition of uh, various prosthetic groups if necessary. So an example of the um, genetic code in terms of the codons, when you have a triplet of the genetic of the new of the base of the bases you would refer to that as a codon and each codon codes for a specific um, amino acid and that amino acid uh, may have a very important uh, physical property within the uh, amino acid chain which gives certain proteins their uh, various characteristics and properties so any change in any one of these uh, codons uh, at a single uh, base position may result in a um, change in one of the amino acids in the amino acid chain and uh, can actually even cause a change in a, a complete change in the amino acid resulting in complete change in uh, physical properties of that uh, particular amino acid chain as highlighted in uh, sickle cell anemia. So other um, Point mutations may change an amino acid codon to cause a chain termination uh, codon or a stop codon. So some of these codons, as highlighted earlier uh, in previous lectures uh, in biochemistry, uh, actually code for the termination of an amino acid chain. So when you find that a change in one of the bases results in this uh, stop, stop codon, this results in what is known as a nonsense mutation. So we also have what are known as frame shift mutations, and these frame shift mutations occur when the insertion or deletion of one or two bases uh, or base pairs alters the reading frame of the DNA strand. So instead of having one reading frame for the uh, genetic code, because you have this loss or addition of bases, uh, you cause a shift in the reading of the codons, and this shift in the reading of the codons alters the uh, eventual uh, amino acid that will be in the amino acid chain and eventually be in the protein. Trinucleotide repeat mutations belong to a special category because these mutations are characterized by amplification of a sequence of three nucleotides, almost always repeated CGG sequences. So we know the CGG is the cytosine and the guanine. Um, Base, bases and these are the most common uh, triplicates which we have in nature. So very important to understand also as well, apart from the uh, point mutations, uh, we also have to look into Mendelian disorders. Uh, so these are diseases which are caused by single gene defects. So in this case, you won't necessarily look at a, an individual base but you look at the gene which codes or, or the, the allele which codes for a particular trait. So when you have this abnormality in these genes, um, this eventually results in a, a, a defect in a trait. So single gene defects uh, follow the well-known Mendelian pattern of inheritance. Although individually each is rare uh, because of um, the nature of this inheritance, the mutations involving single genes follow one of three patterns of inheritance. So we have the autosomal dominant um, inheritance, we also have the autosomal recessive inheritance, and we also have the X-linked inheritance. So in terms of autosomal dominant disorders, the, uh, some examples we have are familial hypercholesterolemia, which is a hereditary condition characterized by elevated levels of uh, cholesterol and its derivatives in the blood. We also have polycystic kidney disease, of which we have two main forms, the adult and the ch uh, childhood form, uh, of which the, um, the adult form is the autosomal dominant. We also have Marfan syndrome, a connective dis uh, tissue disorder caused by an abnormality in one of the very important um, uh, proteins which are necessary for structural integrity of uh, various uh, structures in the body. Uh, we also have Huntington's disease, uh, neurodegenerative disorder, and we also have another connective tissue disorder known as Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. 
Under the autosomal recessive disorders, we have sickle cell anemia, we have uh, Tay-Sachs disease, we also have phenylketonuria, we have galactosemia, glycogen storage diseases of all types, for example, Hurler syndrome, and we also have the other hemoglobinopathy, which is known as thalassemia. Under the sex-linked um, uh, disorders, we have hemophilia, of which there are many sorts. Uh, we also have Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. So autosomal dominant inheritance disorders, um, these are disorders of autosomal dis uh, dominant inheritance and are manifested in the heterozygous state. So at least one parent in uh, any case is usually affected. So heterozygous state is where you have two of the same alleles in one uh, position or in one locus of the genes. Um, and so where you have one parent having um, this state, most likely you have um, inheritance of this because the trait, the um, heterozygous state causes um, an inheritance of the uh, disorder. So in this kind of inheritance, autosomal dominant inheritance, you have both males and females being affected uh, and both can transmit the condition. Uh, when an affected person marries an unaffected one, every child has one chance in two of having the disease. So there's a 50% chance of inheritance with this, con uh, with this form of inheritance. So some of the features of dominant, uh, autosomal dominant disorders uh, the the autosomal dominant disorders. Some patients do not have an affected parent. Do not have an affected parent. So when you have, especially uh, one parent with the condition and one parent without the condition, there's a very high likelihood uh, that you will have that condition. Clinical features can be modified. Uh, by reduced penetrance and variable expressivity. Some persons inherited, some, per some persons inherit the mutant gene by, but are phenotypically normal. This mode of expression is referred to as reduced penetrance. The variables that affect penetrance are not clearly understood though. And in contrast with penetrance, if a trait is consistently associated with a mutant gene, but is expressed differently among persons carrying the gene, the phenomenon is called variable expressivity. For example, manifestations of neurofibromatosis type 1 range from brownish spots on the skin to multiple tumors and skeletal deformities. So you find that, uh, especially with a variable expressivity, not all people will express the uh, disorder in the same way, and the level of the disorder will, uh, will differ as a result of this. In terms of penetrance, on the other hand, this uh, is somewhat diff uh, different in terms of um, the way in which the disorder is manifested. So in many conditions, the age at onset is delayed in autosomal diso uh, dominant disorders, that is, and symptoms and signs do not appear until adulthood, for example, Huntington's disease. Uh, recessive, uh, recessive these are these are frequent than the frequent than the autosomal dominant disorders uh, and this is basically because uh, usually uh, for one actually acquire, actually acquire an autosomal recessive disorder they will have the the both allele both allele both recessive uh, genes from both parents both parents you can only you can only have this disorder in the uh, tiger state tiger state of autosomal of autosomal recessive inheritance make up the largest group of mendelian disorders uh, they occur when both of these alleles at a given gene locus are mutants therefore such disorders are characterized by the following features number one the trait does not usually affect the parents but siblings may show the disease Number two, siblings have one chance in four of being affected. Uh, that is, the recurrence, the, the recurrence risk is 25% for each birth. And number three, if the mutant gene occurs with low frequency in the population, 
there's a strong likelihood that the affected patient is the product of a consanguineous marriage. So you find that these disorders usually occur where closely uh, related individuals um, actually have offspring. And because these closely related uh, individuals usually share genetic uh, uh, makeup, you find that uh, there will be a high occurrence of these, especially in the case of carriers, you find that they can be both carriers for a particular uh, autosomal recessive disorder and uh, subsequent offspring will have a very high chance of developing these uh, disorders. In contrast with features of autosomal dominant diseases, the following features generally apply to most autosomal recessive disorders. The defect, the defect tends to be more uniform than in autosomal dominant disorders. So this is where we don't have the penetrance issues and uh, the variable expressivity as seen in autosomal dominant disorders. Complete penetrance is also common. And onset is frequently early in life. Although, no, although new mutations for recessive disorders do occur, they rarely clinic detect it clinically. Because the affected person is an asymptomatic heterozygote, several generations may pass before the descendants of such a per person mate with other heterozygotes and produce an affected offspring. So sickle cell anemia is one typical example of an autosomal recessive disorder, very common in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, uh, across the Mediterranean, um, has been associated with uh, people of uh, African origin. So we have uh, sex-linked disorders. All sex-linked disorders are X-linked, that is the X chromosome. There has been no significant Y-linked disease that has been described yet. Most X-linked disorders are X-linked recessive and are characterized by the following features. So we have transmission, usually by a heterozygous female carrier, uh, and she's only able to transmit to her sons who are hemizygous for the X chromosome. Heterozygous females rarely express the full phenotypic change because they have the paired normal allele. Although one of the X chromosomes in females is inactivated, uh, this process of inactivation is random, however, which typically allows for sufficient numbers of cells with normal express alleles to emerge. An affected male does not transmit the disorder to his sons, but all daughters are carriers. Sons of heterozygous women have one chance in two of receiving this mutant gene. So generally, it is a condition affecting men, uh, and men tend not to be uh, have a carrier state. However, females do have a carrier state. In very, very rare instances, some um, females may present with some traits of the uh, or some features of the disorder especially where you have a an inactivated x chromosome uh in addition to the uh chromosome carrying the uh disorder or having an abnormality for the disorder uh, you find that some of these uh, women may have some features of the dis of the disorder but not to the um the same extent as the male sufferers. So, when we're, uh, we'll move on to, uh, away from the genetic code, uh, away from the, um, the gametes especially, and we'll now look at uh, other types of disorders also are caused by uh, mutations, but this time we'll talk about um, diseases caused by mutations in genes encoding for structural proteins. So now we're looking at uh, structural proteins. Uh, one of the most common uh, conditions is known as Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome is a connective tissue disorder of uh, autosomal dominant inheritance. 
The basic biochemical abnormality is a, a mutation affecting fibrillin. So this glycoprotein secreted by fibroblasts is the major component of microfibrils found in the extracellular matrix. So uh, as we discussed in earlier lectures, the extracellular matrix more or less forms the scaffold upon which uh, most of um, the cellular the cellular material and uh, other components of um, the body are actually um, scaffolded onto to allow for um, more or less to allow for the uh, structural integrity of that particular uh, organ uh, or muscle or uh, whichever uh, uh, component of the body you may be looking into. So microfibrils serve as scaffolding for the deposition of uh, tropoelastin, an integral component of elastic fibers. Mm -hmm. Although microfibrils are widely distributed in the body, they are particularly abundant in the aorta, ligaments, and the uh, ciliary body that supports the ocular lens. These tissues are prominently affected in Marfan syndrome. So some of the features of Marfan syndrome are ocular changes, uh, as a result of bilateral dislocation or subluxation of the lens, okay. secondary to weakness of its suspensory ligaments. This is known as ectopia lentis. So you find that the lens tends to be sub subluxated upwards and outwards, um, uh, giving uh, this uh, particular um, ocular change. And um, as a result, you find that these um, <laughs> people with Marfan syndrome require uh, usually surgery or they may require corrective lenses to allow them to actually have good vision. You have also fragmentation of the elastic fibers in the tunica media of the aorta, which predisposes uh, affected patients to aneurysmal dilatation and aortic dissection. This is a very um, catastrophic uh, consequence of this condition uh, and it requires very good clinical acumen and good clinical management to ensure that uh, there's no loss of life with regard to this complication. There is also uh, abnormality in the cardiac valves, especially the mitral valve. So there may be excessive, excessively distensible and regurgitant um, valves known as floppy valve syndrome, giving rise to mitral valve prolapse and uh, consequently congestive cardiac failure. Another connective tissue disorder is known as Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is more or less a spectrum of dis uh, diseases characterized by defects in collagen synthesis or structure. All are single gene disorders, but the mode of inheritance encompasses both autosomal dominant and recessive patterns. We also uh, look at uh, diseases that are caused by genes encoding receptor proteins or channels. One of these is familial hypercholesterolemia. As we had mentioned, Hypercholesterolemia is among the most common Mendelian disorders and it's caused by mutations in the LDLR gene that encodes the receptor for low density lipoprotein. In fa familial hypercholesterolemia, mutations in the LDL receptor protein impair the intracellular transport and catabolism of LDL, resulting in accumulation of LDL cholesterol in the plasma. So uh, these tend to be characterized by uh, a young individual having high levels of um, LDL in the blood, cholesterol as well, uh, with various stigmata, stigmata, stigmata of um, hypercholesterolemia, which you would find in uh, elderly patients. So you'll be looking for... Uh, xanthomas in these people, xanthelesma, corneal arcus may be seen as well in these uh, individuals. And because of this, um, of these elevated levels of uh, cholesterol in the blood, they are also pr prone to um, uh, cardiac events as well. So uh, it's very important that 
uh, it's identified as quickly as possible to allow for uh, early initiation of treatment uh, to prevent any further uh, harmful effects to uh, the person suffering this condition. So we have another condition, cystic fibrosis, which is an autosomal recessive disorder. Uh, it's the most common lethal genetic disease that affects the white population. It's a disorder of epithelial transport affecting fluid secretion in exocrine glands and the epithelial lining of the respiratory, gastrointestinal, and reproductive tracts. This eventually results in abnormally viscid mucus secretions that block the airways and the pancreatic ducts and are responsible for the two most important clinical manifestations, that is recurrent and chronic pulmonary infections and pancreatic insufficiency. The primary defect in cystic fibrosis is a normal function of an epithelial chloride channel protein encoded by the CF transmembrane conductance regulator, the CFTR gene. So it's a multi-systemic disorder uh, which typically causes several um, multi-systemic effects affecting multiple organ systems. Uh, and these um, usually cause uh, quite serious, uh, has, has, have, have serious effects on the growth of uh, the children affected by this condition. So you find that these uh, usually present very early on in childhood. Uh, you, you notice um, a child that's failing to thrive, uh, gaining weight quite poorly, not keeping up with his peers in terms of growth, especially height for weight, uh, weight for height and um, weight for age as well. Uh, because of the number of systems affected, the child will also be prone to recurrent chest infections. And unfortunately, with these recurrent chest infections, they may also uh, end up developing copalmonale, um, which is uh, early onset copalmonale. Um, with the gastrointestinal system, you have the pancreatic insufficiency, eventually resulting in them requiring um, uh, replacement of these enzymes. Uh, you also have, um, uh, it also tends to affect the, the biliary system, the pancreatic uh, system. Digestion in general is uh, typically affected, which also may further um, exacerbate um, growth retardation in these uh, children. Um, we also have the reproductive system. Uh, being affected with uh, cryptochidism as well as as well as um, absent vest difference leading to infertility in these uh, sufferers. Uh, so uh, usually they have um, a very low life expectancy as well. Uh, but thankfully, due to advances in uh, medical therapies, we're seeing um, these children have um, growing into adulthood and living longer and longer. So other diseases we have to look out uh, for are those that are caused by mutations in genes encoding for enzyme proteins. So we have phenylketonuria. So we have abnormalities in uh, the way um, phenylalanine is actually uh, metabolized in the body. Uh, we also have galactosemia as well, and lysosome other and also lysosomal thyroid diseases. So diseases caused by genes in encoding for proteins that regulate cell growth. Uh, these were discussed uh, in the previous topic uh, of um, carcinogenesis. So we were talking about the two classes of genes, suppressor and the tumor suppressor and the tumor suppressor genes, which regulate normal cell growth and differentiation. Mutations affecting these genes most often occur in somatic cells and are involved in the pathogenesis of tumors. Okay, so um, of course uh, it's important to note that not all uh, genetic disorders are caused by single gene inheritance and we also have complex multigenic disorders. So the complex multigenic disorders, the so-called 
multifactorial or polygenic disorders are caused by interactions between variant forms of genes and environmental factors. A genetic variant that has at least two alleles and occurs in at least 1% of the population is called a polymorphism. Uh, some of the uh, complex multigenic disorders that we know of are diabetes mellitus, hypertension. So we can actually even go further in the genetic code and into the chromosome and uh, when we, and actually look at the cell as well. So uh, we also have cytogenic abnormalities that can give rise to genetic disease. So the cytogenic disorders may result from alterations in the number or structure of the chromosome and may affect the autosomes or the sex chromosomes. A karyotype is a photographic uh, representation of a stained metaphase spread in which the chromosomes are arranged in order of decreasing length. And by looking at this karyotype, we're able to actually uh, identify particular genetic disorders, especially orders uh, to do with the numbers of the chromosomes. So this is a typical karyotype. Um, so as you can see, they are arranged uh, in uh, descending order. And uh, depending on, uh, especially with in relation to disorders of number, depending on which um, chromosome position is actually affected, you can actually spot whether there's a missing chromosome or an additional chromosome. Uh, present. So, for example, chromosome number 21, when you have three chromosomes at that position, you have what is known as Down syndrome. So, numeric abnormalities. In humans, the normal chromosome count is 46. That is uh, 2n, which is equal to 46, where n represents the number. So, any exact multiple of the haploid number, or n, is called euploid. Chromosome numbers such as 3n and 4n are called polyploid. Polyploidy generally results in a spontaneous abortion. So you won't have a lot of these in uh, real life. Any number that is not an exact multiple of n is called aneuploid. We also have structural abnormalities. So chromosomal breakage followed by loss or rearrangement of uh, chromosomal material can give rise to these genetic disorders. So such changes usually are designated using a cytogenic shorthand in which P, French for petit, denotes the short arm of the chromosome and Q denotes the long arm. Each arm is then divided into numbered regions 1, 2, 3 and so on from centromere outward and within each region the bands are numeric numerically ordered. So thus, um, 2Q34 indicates chromosome 2, long arm, region 3, band 4. This is usually the nomenclature and uh, of um, genetic abnormalities to allow us for identification of the particular area uh, or point in the chromosome where this gene uh, can be identified. So here uh, we use the International System for Human Cytogenic Nomenclature. Um, very straightforward. So what are the patterns of chromosomal rearrangement after breakage? So we have translocation and deletions. So translocations imply transfer of a part of one chromosome to another chromosome. The process is usually reciprocal, that is, uh, fragments are exchanged between the two chromosomes. So for example, you have a fragment breaking off from the short arm and one from the long arm, and these fragments swap places and become reattached um, on opposite ends. We also have deletion. So deletion involves the loss of a portion of a chromosome. A single break may delete a terminal segment. So two interstitial breaks with reunion of the proximal and distal ends may result in loss of an intermediate segment. We also have inversions. So this occurs when there are two interstitial breaks in a chromosome and the segment reunites after a complete turnaround. Then finally, we also have what are known as the ring chromosomes. And these chromosomes are a variant of the deletion um, type of chromosome uh, affecting the chromosome. 
So after loss of segments from each end of the chromosome, the arm the arms unite to form a ring. So basically you form it from the two ends you form a ring between the two chromosomes. More or less forming a bridge between the two chromosomes. So general features of chromosomal disorders. Chromosomal disorders may be associated with absence, deletion, monosomy, excess such as trisomy, or abnormal rearrangements, translocations of chromosomes. In general, loss of chromosome, chromosomal material produces more severe defects than does gain of chromosomal material. Excess chromosomal material may result from a complete chromosome, as in trisomy, or from part of a chromosome, e.g. translocation. Imbalances of sex chromosomes, excess or loss, are tolerated much better than uh, similar imbalances of autosomes. Sex chromosomal disorders often produce subtle abnormalities, sometimes not detected at birth. Infertility, a common manifestation, can be diagnosed cannot be diagnosed until adolescence. So let's talk about some of the cytogenic disorders involving autosomes. So three autosomal trisomies have been well um, studied. So we have uh, chromosomal, so we have autosome, uh, trisomy 21, 18, and 13. And we have one deletion syndrome known as Cri du chat syndrome which results from partial deletion of the short arm of chromosome 5, where the first chromosomal abnormality is to be identified, as I as mentioned earlier. So trisomy 21, also known as Down syndrome, is the most common of the chromosomal disorders. About 95% of these affected have trisomy 21, so their chromosomal count is 47. The most common cause of trisomy is meiotic non-disjunction. So it's a form of... Um, uh, non-disjunction during the uh, process of meiosis, so where you have incomplete break uh, break between the daughter cells, resulting in um, one of the daughter cells having more than the one of the daughter um, having an inheritance of more daughter chromosomes than was uh, initially intended to have. The parents of such children have a normal karyotype type and are normal in all respects. Uh, maternal age has a strong influence on the incidence of Down syndrome. So it occurs in 1 in 1,550 live births in women younger than 20 years as compared to 1 in 25 live births in women older than 45 years. So you find as a woman gets older, her risk of having a child with Down syndrome actually increases. So here's an example of the uh, karyotype for Down syndrome. If you look at chromosome uh, at position 21, you'll see that there are three chromosomes instead of the two. So here are some of the features of uh, Down syndrome. So you'll find that uh, in Down syndrome, there'll be growth failure, mental retardation, there'll be a flat back of the head, uh, which is known as brachycephaly. You also have abnormal ears. You may have many loops on fingertips. There will also be a single palmar crease known as the simian crease. There will also be a special skin ridge pattern on the hand. There will also be unilateral or bilateral absence of one rib. Intestinal blockage known as intestinal obstruction may be present as a result of usually an enlarged colon and uh, inherited um, uh, aganglionogenesis which is uh, more or less where you have absence of the uh, ganglions in the terminal end of the intestine. So we also have uh, umbilical hernias. You can have ab abnormal pelvis, uh, diminished muscle tone as well. Uh, generally, they are hypotonic. They may also have a broad, a broad flat face, slanting eyes and apicanthic eye fold and the short broad nose, uh, characteristic features of Down syndrome. They may also have short and broad hands. There may also be a small arched palate, big wrinkled tongue, but usually this is um, not a genuinely large tongue, but uh, uh, just looks enlarged. We may also have dental anomalies, uh, congenital heart disease, 
usually as a result of endocardial, uh, endocardial cushion uh, abnormalities. So you can have a VSD, a ventricular septal defect, you can have an atrial septal defect, or an AVSD. Um, then, as mentioned earlier, there's the enlarged colon, which can occur, and the big toe being widely spaced. This is typically known as the sandal gap, a wide sandal gap. So, uh, we also have cytogenic disorders involving sex chromosomes. So, in females, one X chromosome, a maternal or a paternal, is ram randomly inactivated during development. In Klinefelter syndrome, for example, there are two or more X chromosomes with one Y chromosome as a result of non-disjunction of the X chromosomes. Patients have testicular atrophy, sterility, reduced body hair, gynecomastia, and a unicoid body habitus. It is the most common cause of male sterility. In Turner syndrome, however, there is partial or complete monosomy of genes on the short arm of the X chromosome most commonly due to the absence of one X chromosome. So this is typically denoted by the 45X and less commonly from mosaicism or from deletion involving the short arm of the X chromosome. Short stature, webbing of the neck, cubitus valgus, cardiovascular malformations, amenorrhea, lack of secondary sexual characteristics, and fibrotic ovaries are typical clinical features. So here in a, uh, is a table uh, showing the uh, common six chromosome abnormalities. So uh, we have um, abnormalities involving the X and also the Y chromosome. So when you have uh, the XO, we, the disease associated is Turner syndrome. When you have XXY, you have Klinefelter syndrome. When you have XYY, we have double Y syndrome. When we have triple X, we have trisomy X syndrome, and when we have XXXX, is known, it's known as the 4X syndrome. So here's an example of uh, someone with Klinefelter syndrome. So typically they'll have lower IQs than their siblings, they'll be of tall stature, poor muscle tone, reduced secondary sexual characteristics, gynecomastia, which are known as male breasts, and small testes, uh, which also subsequently results in infertility. So they usually lack typical male characteristic features and they have a more feminine appearance. So they'll have uh, frontal baldness absence, poor beard growth, a tendency to grow fewer chest hairs, narrow shoulders, uh, there'll be gynecomastia, there'll be a female type pubic hair pattern, wide hips, uh, smaller testicular size and long legs. Turner syndrome, on the other hand, you'll notice that they'll have narrow, high arched palate, they'll have a low hairline, a webbed neck is very common, with low set ears, coarctation of the iota, bicuspid aortic valve is also common. Uh, there's also a broad chest with widely spaced nipples, known as the shield chest. There'll also be an uh, elbow deformity known as a cubitus valgus, and abnormalities of the renal system, such as a horseshoe kidney. Uh, they also may have strict ovaries, amenorrhea, and infertility, and they're usually having short stage. This marks the end of the lecture. Thank you so much for your attention.